So security is very imperative uh, to any network design and specifically uh, designs that include uh, cloud. And cloud is becoming really um, very predominant uh, or taking a very predominant place within the uh, enterprise architecture. A lot of organizations are moving from uh, uh, traditional uh, on-premises um, sort of uh, application deployments into one or multiple clouds. Now, those uh, transitions, they uh, carry with them, um, you know, architectural uh, baggage of how to architect networking and security elements uh, for this new cloud era where applications are distributed um, all around in one multiple clouds, uh, software as a service environment, or even edge computing environments, right? And so security is becoming very, very paramount to, uh, to, that, to the success of that uh, of that motion, right? Now, we also know that security attacks are becoming uh, increasingly sophisticated, right? And uh, especially that's especially true when applications are moving uh, to the cloud and cloud infrastructure is not always uh, to the same level uh, of capabilities and features that uh, enterprises have been um, used to in their on-premises environments, right? So, um, so this uh, security-oriented mindset is extremely important for, um, for building these networks that now span not only the on-premises environment, but, uh, but also cloud environments, uh, because uh, we know that um, um, if, if loopholes are left, then uh, there was, there's gonna be somebody who is going to exploit that loophole is gonna get in and uh, nobody wants to end up on, uh, you know, on the, in the headlines of uh, networks being compromised and uh, data is being, uh, being stolen, right? Um, so, so definitely, uh, security is top of mind for organizations that are considering a move to the to the cloud. When you look at what um, what cloud did to the application landscape and to the compute and storage and other infrastructure elements, it really drove this extreme agility and extreme simplification into um, into this into these elements, right? And the the way that this was achieved is because cloud offered a very convenient a consume versus build model where organizations don't really have to build their infrastructure elements anymore. They consume them from the cloud and that extends to um, compute, um, storage, uh, application environments. And, uh, and that gave these this, um, this elements this, this extreme agility and flexibility, right? Um, so a migration from this do-it-yourself to as a service, and as I said, consume versus build, really gave that, that, that agility to those elements. Now, when you look at networking and security, that really hasn't uh, kept up with the pace of, uh, of the application transitions to the cloud. And uh, if you look at what happens today is many of these networks and, networks and security uh, elements in those networks, they are a do-it-yourself um, and uh, the, um, the idea that uh, the organizations are migrating or would be migrating from this do-it-yourself approach to as a service approach really allows the organizations to um, kind of the unleash the, um, the agility and the simplification that, uh, that organizations and enterprises are, uh, are looking for, right? Um, now, we have a lot of uh, examples um, from even very kind of recent times uh, where this do-it-yourself approaches have uh, failed to address the, the needs of the organizations. And one of the most maybe prominent examples in the recent past is a variety of ransomware attacks, right? We all know that these ransomware attacks have been on the headlines um, in the recent, uh, recent news. And uh, so if you think about it, if you pause for a second, um, the reasons for this ransomware attacks, and of course, this could be many reasons, but one reason that I can think about is that uh, um, the organizations that, that are hit by this ransomware attacks. And again, it's not always kind of a black and white, but some of the organizations that get hit by this ransomware attacks, they have no you know, particular competency in building networks and security, right? That's just not their business, right? They're, they're doing their own things. And, uh, and then they get hit by you know, the, somebody who exploits vulnerability in, in their environment and customer's environment and just gets in and then bad things happen, right? They hijack systems, they um, take away data. So these ransomware attacks are uh, partially come into play because organizations don't have the competency to build on their own comprehensive security controls that would prevent from this malicious, um, malicious incidents from happening. So that's in addition to this 
um, agility and simplicity, the idea that as a service consumption also frees these organizations from kind of the burden of um, sort of getting the expertise and qualifications to build this top-notch um, security um, security controls to prevent this ransomware attacks from happening, right? So there's quite a few kind of advantages of uh, as a service model versus the do-it-yourself model um, as, as it comes to, you know, to networking and security in particular. If you look at what Alkira comes uh, comes to offer, is that we've taken really kind of a fresh look. And uh, if I go by what I mentioned earlier, is this um, sort of a do-it-yourself versus as-a-service approach. We all recognize that this as-a-service approach is what gave um, this uh, compute, storage, application environments, this agility and simplification, right? So the thought that came to mind is that what if we can take this as-a-service approach and extend it into the networking and security? Right, and um, this is something that um, that is um, hasn't really been done to that extent before. The network as a service is not a new term; obviously, it existed before. But leveraging this cloud attributes and cloud infrastructure to build this network as a service, this is a fundamentally new approach, and that's what Alkira really came to do. Right, and the way to do that is that we could have taken kind of the easy way, uh, which, which which would be the way of automation. Right, or only automation. We could have just automated this uh, cloud native constructs in each one of those clouds. And as you have alluded, multi-cloud is uh, playing a um, you know, predominant role in many organizations and every cloud has its own controls. So we could have really taken the automation approach and says, we're just going to automate each one of those clouds individually. And that's gonna give us the um, sort of the, um, the ability to give organizations sort of this sort of, you know, next gen networking and security. But we said, you know, that's not good enough. And what we really need to do is fundamentally change the infrastructure layer that these network and security um, services are being delivered on. And that's what we have done. We have built what we call a cloud network infrastructure, which is completely virtualized. It relies on a public cloud infrastructure and hyperscalers, right? And uh, um, that infrastructure is delivered as a service to enterprises who can build their own networks with integrated security on top of it, right? So this ability to offer this infrastructure almost as a platform type of thing to organizations so they can build their own networks. And when I say build, it's more of a consume their own networks. They build them on top of this platform, but at the end, the model itself is a model of consumption. Um, and they build and consume those networks on top of this Alkira's virtual infrastructure. And these networks are full featured uh, networks that any enterprise, any enterprise would build. And they encompass the on-premises environments, they encompass a single cloud environments, they encompass multi-cloud environments. So organizations that are in the process of going from on-premise to cloud, from cloud to multi-cloud, they can basically leverage this Alkira platform that we call an Alkira Cloud Services Exchange in order to build those networks and security is tightly integrated into that. Any sound network design must include elements of security. Otherwise, basically an organization is open to a whole variety of bad things that could happen um, you know, exploits, attacks, uh, data breaches, and whatnot, right? So we've, we've going by that philosophy, we have um, decided that we're going to integrate these security services into the networks that people can build, the organizations can build on top of this Alkira uh, virtual infrastructure. Now, the way that we've done this is we have integrated several sort of uh, built-in security mechanisms, which are things like, you know, end-to-end -end encryption and segmentation. So things that are basically uh, very basic from, um, from security, security standpoint, but we've also integrated things such as what we call a, a network services marketplace, which allows uh, organizations and enterprises to onboard their own, um, call it third party um, security appliances onto this Alkira platform, and we take care of integrating those, um, those appliances, those virtual appliances into their network. 
So I'll give you an example. Um, let's say an organization is deploying a network that connects uh, you know, multiple sites and multiple uh, AWS, uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, Google Compute workloads uh, together, right? So building this network is really easy on the Alkira uh, platform because it's all kind of driven by this um, point and click UI. Now, once this network is built, the next question is, well, great, how do I insert security into it? So for that, an, um, an operator of, uh, of the solution would simply go into the marketplace, which is the Alkira's marketplace, select a next generation firewall from that marketplace and just almost drag and drop it onto the, uh, onto the networking environment that was just built and provide a you know, couple of you know, inputs that are required to bootstrap that deployment, such as you know, what is your administrative password, um, username, password, uh, which segments do you want to be extended to the firewall? What is the sizing of the firewall? Several things that are required in order for the system to kind of take over. And then almost magically, that firewall gets inserted and instantiated in the um, Alkira's infrastructure. And we take care of this entire life cycle of that uh, network service which means if that virtual appliance were to fail, we would reinstantiate it. If that virtual appliance would run out of capacity, we would scale it out automatically, which we call auto-scaling. Um, we will monitor it for performance and health characteristics. So all of these kind of elements that come with having that uh, security enforcement integrated into the network. And the most challenging thing for the security and networking guys is that how do I actually route the traffic to it, which is really difficult even in the full featured on-premises networks and becomes extremely difficult in a cloud networks that lack some of those controls around routing and policy-based routing and things like that. So we take care of not only the sort of the well-being and the scaling of that uh, security element, but also routing and symmetrically routing the traffic to that um, security security appliance, <clears throat> that uh, firewall. All right, so it's really kind of nifty way for for people to integrate this uh, these security elements into the network that they they have uh, they have built, right? And it has a variety of use cases from. Uh, cloud to inspecting cloud to cloud traffic, inspecting on-premise sites to on-premise site traffic, inspecting on-premise to cloud traffic, on-premise to internet, cloud to internet, inbound from internet, which is what we call the DMZ. So a lot of kind of use cases come to life when that security is integrated and everything is done um, rather than sort of, you know, somebody going in and just doing CLI config or a box by box config, but something is done on this policy layer that I dump this security appliance, this firewall, I go into the policy, I define what I want this, um, you know, what traffic needs to go to that security appliance, that firewall, and then just automatically um, that steering happens. It's all symmetric, it's scalable, always up. Um, so high availability is, is included. So, so a lot of kind of cool use cases come to life um, as part of this um, security integration. We go to market with our partners. We obviously have security capabilities that are embedded within our solution. So organizations who need um, sort of a more basic level of security um, can leverage that kind of right out of the box, so to speak even though there is no box, it's all virtual in the cloud, but sort of out of the box uh, within the Alkira solution. And the partnership really come to play when organizations are seeking more kind of a deeper uh, security control, such as you know firewalls, next-gen firewalls, web application firewalls, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention uh, appliances and things like that, right? So all that really comes, comes to play as um, you know, a part of our partnership as, which is part of our network uh, services um, uh, marketplace, right? And uh, and like I mentioned, this uh, sort of a holistic approach that comes from the fact is that uh, it's all integrated, right? It's not just a, a sort of a piecemeal solution that uh, you take, a, you know, you take a network from vendor A, you take um, a security from vendor B because they are the best of breed solutions. And that's what your organization sort of, that's the, the policy of the organization is that you must use this security uh, appliance, this firewall 
um, vendor, specific vendor for, um, you know, for providing security, right? And it's not like just taking these pieces and just gluing it on your own in a do-it-yourself fashion, but this idea that this is all integrated under one umbrella of one solution, right? And built on top of this, uh, you know, cloud network infrastructure and the best of all delivered as a service, which is really kind of closing the loop with what we started with, is that uh, this is exactly the same philosophy that, that really gave birth to cloud and agility and simplification that the cloud brought. Now this gets extended to networking and security. So organizations can now kind of holistically look into their sort of a infrastructure, both from compute, storage, applications, networking and security now, and all of that becomes just one sort of blob of agility and simplicity. Right. So, so it's really kind of an interesting uh, fundamental shift from this do it yourself to as a service approach that really sort of drives the simplicity and agility and opens a whole slew of use cases that we talked about uh, that organizations can now use for uh, for building networks and uh, on premises networks, cloud and multi cloud networks and integrating uh, best of breed security elements into it. Shadow IT is one of those kind of elephant in a room that uh, many organizations really don't want to tackle, uh, but it is in there and it's a major, major concern. Um, so first, just to establish uh, what is Shadow IT, right? And Shadow IT has been there for forever, right? But it's become really predominant in the age of the cloud, in the cloud era. And the reason for it is that the networking and security infrastructure hasn't really kept up with the pace of application uh, transitions to the cloud. So when these applications move to the cloud, when the application developers, when the DevOps people get their hands on the cloud um, and deploying things in the cloud, they basically just do their job, right? And they do the best job that they can do uh, of deploying networking and security controls in the cloud. Now, those controls are not necessarily, and specifically security controls, are not necessarily in line with what this organization's IT security policy is. For example, an IT security policy may say that all internet exit points must be protected by the next generation firewall. Now, deploying a next generation firewall in the cloud is a pretty difficult thing to do, right? There are deployment guides out there, but it's not an easy task to do. Certainly something that an application person or you know a DevOps person that has no background in networking and security can easily execute on. So what do people do? Well, they bypass it, right? They basically don't do it, right? They just take the path of list resistance. So they deploy the applications, they click through the menus, they see some elements of security, security groups or network access list. They apply those to the best of their knowledge and this is it, their job is done. Now, the problem is that the IT organization is unaware, many times is unaware of how things are done in the cloud. Or maybe they are aware of this, but they have no enforcement and no, no governance around this. So what ends up being is that Things get done in the cloud, but at the same time, um, the organizations become increasingly exposed to the fact that now there's a new whole new attack vector that could be coming into the organizations from the this cloud uh, environment. Now, um, what's the way? What is the way to fix it? Right. So the way to fix it is, of course, to let professionals handle this. Right. And that means going to the IT departments and the networking and security folks in these departments and asking them to apply this proper, you know, security security controls. Right. But that takes time because to our conversation today, we all recognize that networking and security of the on-premises world is not really, you know, applicable. Uh, to the cloud world where the rules of the the rules are very different right so it takes time it may take investments and that is really counterproductive to this sort of you know devops and application folks that are really looking at the cloud for its agility and simplicity 
right? So it creates this conflict uh, between the two, and uh, and that's where that really gives birth to this shadow IT and exposes organizations to all of this sort of you know negative things that could happen uh, if if things are not done right, right? And we as as a provider of the solution, um, because we take a very comprehensive approach into networking and security. And most importantly, really bringing this agility and simplification into networking and security. If the IT uh, organizations were able to keep pace with application developers and a DevOps team and provide this next gen network and security controls to those environments at a click of a button, literally at the click of a button, then the shadow IT problem would have been solved on its own, right? It would not exist anymore. And that's what we're seeing with uh, enterprises that we are engaging in is that by stepping up sort of the game, by stepping up the agility of the network and security solution by using Alkira, it really kind of puts a lead on the shadow IT and prevents these sort of malicious attacks from happening and uh, data data leaks from happening and you know ending up on the headlines of uh, of a publication, right? So so shadow IT is a big problem, and the fact that IT couldn't really deliver the agility that the cloud teams have needed really just reinforced this this shadow IT. But now. It's coming to an end. The one thing I can say is that, um, you know, to in summary, is that organizations really can't treat security as an afterthought, right? So security must be something that's brought to the table um, right when networks are built, right? And making the right choice in what solution um, is leveraged by the enterprises to build these networks and whether those solutions have this capabilities of, of integrating next-gen security into it becomes a very, a very important consideration when choosing kind of the proper um, architecture, right? And that is true for on-premises environments, and that is very true for cloud environments that are way more challenging than, uh, than the traditional environments. And uh, the one thing I can, uh, I can say in closing is that I invite uh, anybody to go to alkira.com website and um, kind of you know look through what uh, what we have to offer um, read through the white papers read through the material that we have available watch our videos and uh, of course reach out to us at uh, contact at alkira.com we'll be happy to get in touch with you and talk uh, talk to you about uh, uh, how you can leverage the simplicity and agility of the alkira platform for your networking and security needs show you a demonstration um, that will, will basically very much visualize what it means to run this networks and security um, for this cloud era.